Outside the talks, at an anti-Assad demonstration, there had never been an expectation of a breakthrough, but there had been hope. After less than half an hour of the final day's meeting, that was dashed. The talks broke up amid recriminations. UN envoy Lakhdar Brahimi knows that means the killing goes on. I'm very, very sorry, and I apologize to the Syrian people uh, that uh, their hopes which were very, very high that something will happen here. I apologize to them that uh, on these two rounds we haven't helped, the, helped them very much. And the suffering goes on. In Homs, there had at least been a temporary local ceasefire that had allowed a small amount of food aid to go in. When the shooting begins again, the convoys will have to stop. The government and opposition in Geneva blamed each other for the lack of progress. The opposition says the government won't discuss the idea of President Assad standing down. The government says the opposition will not talk about disarming terrorists. When we sat down, it turned out they want to accept the agenda, but to focus only on one track, on the issue of terrorism. We immediately accepted the draft agenda, while the other side did not. You know, whatever you hear from these amateurs when they come here in here and they stand on the podium and they address the media, the international media, this is not accurate. Mr. Brahimi did not say who he felt was at fault for what is essentially a breakdown in the talks, but the British government did. Foreign Secretary William Haig said the responsibility for it lies squarely with the Assad regime. The regime refused to discuss the issue of a transitional governing body an issue that is at the heart of the negotiation and an essential means of ending the conflict. And across the country, more violence. The army and opposition forces fought each other, and the main opposition took on the jihadist groups from whom they've split. The death toll since March 2011 is approaching the 150,000 mark. The failure of talks in Geneva ensures that figure will be reached. Tim Marshall, Sky News.